In today's video, I'm reviewing some of your photos. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rooker Films. And in today's video, I'm reviewing some of your photos. So I went onto Twitter and I asked you to send me your best photography. And in exchange for that, I would review some of your photos and give you my honest feedback. Now let's jump straight into the photos. Right, so we're on Twitter and Let's start with these incredible photos from Shana Stanley. Now let's go with this first photo. We have this incredible long exposure photo of the waterfalls. This is really awesome. The composition is incredible. The long exposure of the water coming down is really beautiful. The colors are nice. Incredible work, Shana. Really incredible work. Okay, let's take this photo from Just Anya. This is a photo of a woman walking into the sea, walking out into the distance. This is really nice. I love the fact that the subject is centered up right in the middle of the frame. I love the horizon that's nice and straight. The clouds have got nice contrast. The colors are nice. The only thing I would do to improve this photo is maybe frame this over to the left just to remove this, this pier on the right. This is taking my attention away from the center of the frame because it is quite a heavy object. So. I probably would have tilted the camera to the left a little bit just to focus more on the person in the middle of the frame. But awesome composition. I love what you've done. Incredible photo. Okay, we have an incredible series of photos from Maria. Oh, which photo am I gonna choose? These are all incredible, by the way. Really nice. Let's choose this fourth photo. This is a photo of New York, I imagine. I have no idea how you managed to get up there to take this photo, but I mean, massive congratulations because that looks really cool. I love the leading lines of the bridge and of the grid lines in the traffic. The road is all kind of pointed towards the horizon. It's a beautiful photo, but if I was to give you feedback on how to improve this, I would say go over to the left a little bit, try and be above the middle lane so it's nice and centered, and then probably just straighten the horizon up just a little bit because you're a bit wonky. But other than that, that's an incredible photo, really awesome work. Uh, right, so we have this awesome photo from Kelsey, and this is a photo of a flower. This is really nice. Your bokeh in this image is really nice. I love the fact that the flower in the foreground is nice and sharp, and it kind of fades away into the blurry background. This is really nice. Your composition is really strong. I can't give you anything to improve on that. It's really awesome. Solid work. Right, Rhea has this awesome set of photos, but which one are we gonna focus on? We're gonna focus on the... Let's focus on this lampshade photo. This is really nice. I love the fact that these are falling off into the distance. It looks really nice. I love the fact that it's blurring out in the distance as well. If I had to improve this photo, I would say just frame this up to the left a little bit. The lampshades are falling on the left-hand side of the frame a little bit too strongly which means you're seeing the edge of the frame. Your eye is being led to the very edge of the frame. So if I was to improve this photo, I probably would have tilted the camera to the left just a little bit to center all of these up. There's so many really awesome photos here, by the way. Thank you to everybody that sent these in. These are really, really awesome photos. Right, Liv Grace has this awesome shot of Liverpool. I love, I love the silhouette of the banners, the lamp, the chain rails right in the foreground. And I love the sunset. I love how everything is nice and underexposed. It looks really awesome, really cool. If I was to improve on this though, I would probably say frame it up to the right a little bit. There's this tree on the right and you've got this lamppost, which is kind of on the third grid line, but I would pull this over to the right just a little bit and use the tree and the lamppost as a window to shoot through. This would be really nice because you'd be shooting a frame within a frame, but really awesome. The colors are nice and the silhouette is really cool. Awesome work, Liv. There's this really cool photo of this bridge and it's leading off into the forest. Now, the one thing that I love about this photo is these leading lines from this bridge going into that path, carrying you through the frame. Your eyes naturally wanna follow this line into the forest. Really cool photo, really strong composition, really awesome work, well done. Okay, Morgan, this is a photo of the beach. You've got the sea coming in, you've got the pebble beach in the foreground. This is nice, but the horizon is really crooked. It's uh, almost at 45 degrees. It's a little bit too extreme. So I would straighten this up and you would have a really nice photo. So next time, think about the horizon and make sure that's nice and straight. You can turn the grid lines on in most cameras and with these grid lines, it's always awesome to match the horizon, line it up perfectly with one of those grid lines and you'll have a great photo. We have this really awesome photo of an eye and eye photography is really difficult because you typically need a macro lens to do this type of work. But this is really nice. The color of the eye is nice and strong. This is really nice. The only thing I would say to improve this 
is to make sure the focus falls on the eyeball. It appears that the focus is on the eyelash, which does look cool, but if I was to take this photo, I'd probably try and focus onto the eyeball just a little bit more, just so you can see the detail of the eye. But the composition is awesome and this is a really good photo, so great work. Uh, next up we have Soph, and there's these awesome series of pictures from live shows, but we're not gonna pick those. We're gonna pick the fourth one because this is really awesome photography. This is the old Brighton Pier, and I love the fact that you've centered the framing up nice and perfectly. You've got the Brighton Pier, the Burnt Down Pier in the very background, and you've got these columns on the left and the right of the frame that are carrying your eyes to the main subject, which is the pier at the very end. Photography is really awesome, really nice. If I was to improve the photo, I would probably take the photo in front of those pillars. You've got these signs about no swimming, a little bit distracting, so I'd probably go in front of those pillars. But other than that, it's an incredible photo. The composition is nice and strong, the colors are nice, and the horizon is nice and straight, so great work. Right, next up we have... Okay, Chels, I did a Disney series for my lighting final last seminar. My theme was bringing animation to your inner childhood self. This series is a series of 10 if you want the rest, but I would love your opinion. Yes. My phone is being really weird. Okay, for some reason, Siri keeps trying to speak to me, so I'm gonna turn that off. So I'm gonna concentrate on this third image. This is the princess on the pink background, and this is really awesome because you've got multiple different layers within this photo. We've got these shadowed blurry flowers or objects in the foreground and then we're having to look through this to our subjects and this is really nice because it gives your photo really nice depth. So to summarize this is a really awesome photo and I would love to know how you got on with this because I honestly think you would have got a really good mark with this. So next we have this really awesome picture from Ella McCafferty. Ella McCafferty. This is this really awesome photo of a horse jumping over this bollard and this is really cool when you're shooting fast moving subjects you need your shutter speed to be nice and high in order to capture sharp detail in the photo and you've got this horse in crystal clear sharp detail so you nailed the shutter speed the only thing i would work on in the future is your composition it's a little bit too high up the photo so i would pull this down just a little bit give your subject a little bit of headroom and that would be an incredible photo but the shutter speed and the fact that you managed to get this framed up in the center is really awesome so great job just work on giving that subject the extra bit of headroom next time next up we have jess and there are some really cool photos here there's a series of four photos these are all really nice but i'm going to focus on this first image so the first image is this shopping mall or something along those lines with this really awesome domed roof you're looking up towards this this is really cool really beautiful i love the lighting and it looks as though you've shot this with long exposure because you can kind of see these light streaks coming from the lights if i were to improve on this though i would go directly under the center of the dome rather than shooting from an angle i would go directly under the dome and shoot right under that decoration up towards the ceiling but incredible work incredible photo and your use of colors is really awesome cool we've got this really cool photo from millie and we have some berries, cherries, whatever they are, they're in the foreground. And we have this woman in the background out of focus. And this is really cool because we're looking through these berries, these cherries in the foreground to this person in the background. So you have a really nice use of frame within a frame. That's really cool. I love the colors in this. It's like a nice desaturated autumn tone. Honestly, this is a really awesome photo. I love what you've done here. Great job. So next up we have Emily Dixon and Emily has this really awesome series of four photos but the one that I'm going to concentrate on is the second photo. And this is of a male subject on a white background with a double exposure effect of a city center overlaying him. This is really awesome. The photo is beautifully composed. The double exposure effect is giving so much character to this. I honestly don't know what I'd do to improve this. This is an incredible photo, an awesome use of editing, and this is really awesome. So great job. So next up, we have three photos from Claire Rainey 3. And this is an awesome series of photos utilizing light. So in the first and third photos, we have fairy lights. And in the second photo, we have this really cool neon light. Now these are really awesome. Your use of lighting is really creative. It's really awesome. But if I was to improve something, it would be to nail your focus. The second and the third photos are slightly out of focus. The eyes are a little bit too blurry. 
But keep doing what you're doing, keep practicing, keep working hard at photography. I can see you do have a natural creative eye for photography. So keep practicing and honestly, you're going to absolutely kill it this year. So amazing work. Next up we have Vicky and I'm gonna choose this photo of this Mustang and that is really awesome. This Mustang is tearing away, it's doing donuts, it's doing something, it's shredding its tires and you've got this awesome smoke piling out from the tires of the car. And you absolutely nailed focus on this. I can see there's a foreground element that says raceway, which is blurry. There's a blue car in the background, which is blurry. And your car, your main subject, is perfectly sandwiched between the foreground and the background in crystal clear, sharp detail, incredible work. This is really awesome work and you have very clearly utilized multiple different photography techniques within this one shot. So really, really awesome work. So next up, we have this awesome series of photos from Sheila Jones that says a few of many brilliant sunsets over the Mersey from the Albert Dock. And I'm going to concentrate on the second image. And the reason why is because I love the composition. Rather than placing the horizon on the lower third grid line, you've placed it towards the bottom of the photo. And this is really awesome because this is an example of extreme composition and extreme framing. It looks really awesome, it looks really cool, and it really draws your eyes towards the main subject, which is this absolutely gorgeous sunset. Honestly, incredible photo and I can't believe you got to experience this sunset. That is absolutely gorgeous. Next up is this really creative photo from Laura Nielsen. And we have this really awesome photo of some flowers in flower pots. They're really colorful, really bright. And I love the fact that you shot these from a bird's eye point of view. Rather than shooting them at a lower angle, which most people would probably opt for, you got right on top of the flowers and showed them from a different perspective. So awesome composition, awesome angle, awesome place to take the photo from. Incredible work. Next up we have Max Alcock and Max is a professional photographer and videographer. You're a million times better at photography than I ever could be. So I feel a little bit weird giving you advice, but this first photo of Birmingham, I think this is, is really nice. You've got some really cool blue tones, which look beautiful. And the second photo is really awesome and interesting because you've got this really beautiful silhouette in the center of the frame, which your eyes are instantly drawn to. And you've got the leading lines on the left and the right of these double yellow lines pointing you towards this subject. And then those spotlights above them, the purple and the blue spotlights, again, help you to draw your eyes towards the subject. Max, I don't know how you do it, but your work is incredible. And I'm not gonna give you advice on how to improve because this is awesome and you have a very creative eye for photography. So. Awesome work, Max. And we need to catch up soon, by the way. It's been way too long. Okay, M at Squishy Brook has this really cool photo of two lights. And I like the fact that there's contrasting colors within this photo. You've got the warmer tungsten light bulb in the foreground, and then you've got a blue tone in the background. And it's really nice because it's giving you this beautiful cinematic teal and orange look, which always looks beautiful. I love the fact that this is at a slight angle. It's a Dutch angle, which looks really creative, but if I were to improve this, I would just crop this over into the right just so that the left light bulb landed on the left grid line and the right light bulb landed on the right grid line. So slightly crop the photo and you're on to a winner there. Beautiful, beautiful photo. Next photo comes from Hannah and this is another eye shot. I think eye shots are really awesome and really interesting. And what I find really cool about this eye photo is you have the hair on the left of the photo just wrapping around the eyeball and this is pointing you towards the eye. This is where you should be looking. So next we have this really cool photo of Berlin by L at fellow Wyatt. And the photo is great. You capture this on a really beautiful day, but I would probably use the location a bit more than you have done. I've been to this landmark before and when you walk through these blocks, the ground kind of goes up and down. You've got all these blocks giving you harsh leading lines. So I feel like you could have better utilized the location and got into the blocks a little bit more. But the photo that you have taken is really awesome. It does look really cool. The colors really pop out in this photo and the horizon is nice and straight. But advice for future photography is maybe utilize the location and look for interesting angles. So the last photo that I'm going to analyze is this really awesome photo from the desert. This looks really cool, really awesome. I love the fact that the person is on the lower half of the subject because it really dwarfs this person and really shows the true size of this sand dune. But if I was to improve this, I would be more creative with the crop. So rather than having this nice wide photo, I would pull this in, make this a portrait length photo and place the person right in the center of the frame 
so that your eye is drawn immediately to them. I think the reason why I say this is because this hut or building on the left of the frame is a little bit distracting. It's kind of taking my eye away from the main subject, which is the person. So I would get rid of that, crop the right, crop the left, and just have the person in the center of the frame. But this is a really awesome photo. It's nice and sharp, in focus. It's nice and straight. The colors are awesome. So honestly, great work. And there you go, my photo review video is now complete. But before we wrap this up, I just wanna say thank you ever so much to everybody that has sent a photo in. Your work is incredible and it was an absolute honor looking at all of your photography. I just apologize if I didn't get the opportunity to review your photo in today's video. There were so many photos to get through, but that is why I'm going to try and do another review your photo videos in the future. So if you would like to see that, then please do let me know in that comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking this, check out the previous video by clicking this, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.